Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're starting a brand new journey inside of After Effects, taking a look at creating this motion graphics poster. Let's get started. Tip Tut. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects. And as you can see, this is the first test that I did to make sure this concept would work. We've got this between a rock and a hard place motion graphic here. We've got some cool trim line effects and nice glitching um, text and rock image here. What we're gonna be creating, however, is a recreation of this version here. Very similar concepts, uh, apart from I don't fancy doing the same thing twice. Uh, and it will help you guys explore it all if we do the same one together. So let's just do that. First thing we're going to do is recreate this uh, image inside of After Effects with um, editable, manageable layers, and then we'll get to animating all of those once that's actually created and ready to go. So first things first, we need to create a new composition. I'm going to call this one Tutorial Main. It's going to be 2560 by 1440, but yours can be smaller, um, 1920 by 1080, or even 1280 by 720 if your computer can't handle that. And I'm going to make it about 10 seconds long. So we've got our new composition here. Let's take our um, image that we've got uh, from here in our assets. Now, if you don't have these, you can download them from my website along with the same fonts and other assets that I've used so you can follow along if you want to. However, there's no need to use the same imagery. You can apply these techniques to your own imagery using your own fonts and your own colors and things like that. Some people, however, have told me they find it easier to follow along in these circumstances. So I'm just gonna drag this onto our timeline here and pop that into our composition. First thing I'm gonna need to do to recreate this is to um, drag this down to the side so we can see the top and bottom of the gradient colors. And we're gonna create a solid using these gradient colors, okay? Just gonna turn our um, preview here onto auto. And I'm gonna to go to layer, new, and solid. And we'll just call this one BG for background. We'll make it the same size as our composition. Now let's drag that below our image. And under your effects and presets panel, you're going to need to go and type in um, gradient ramp. Click and drag that gradient ramp onto your background. And you'll notice it'll go from white to black. And if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see you have these two handles here that usually appear next to the middle of the uh, control points. We're going to want to drag the white to the top and the black to the bottom like so. Uh, and then we can change the white with a eyedropper to this yellow and the black with an eyedropper to this pink. And now we've got a nice recreated background there. Once we've done that, we can scale this up so it fills the screen in, a, in the size that we want our finished object to be. And I'm just gonna reposition that so it's vaguely central. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna grab this layer and hit T that brings up the opacity panel and I'm going to drop it to about 50 just so that I can see through it just in case we have to put any layers underneath. Now, let's first of all put in this image here. So I have this asset under my project panel here, separate it out. Again, you can download this from the website if you need to. I'm going to drag that in over the top of it and using these control um, corners here and holding shift, I'm going to scale it down until it's roughly in position. Now it can be difficult to see whether this is the same size. Obviously, if you're creating your own one, it doesn't matter. You can position it how you like. But if we turn this layer to multiply and zoom in, you can see that we can see through both of these layers. And then using the um, uh, arrow keys and the scale tools, we can start positioning this so it's pretty accurately over the top. Now that looks pretty much bang on and I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna turn that layer um, blending mode back to normal. Let's hide this for now, however, so we can get in drawing the rest of these lines. Let's tackle these lines first. Now, the way we want these to grow is that we want to choose a base shape. And as each corner grows in, as you can see on our main uh, composition here, as each corner grows in, that next line will sprout from that area. So we need to just basically decide what those corners are going to be. I'm going to choose this main triangle here as our first line. So let's grab our pen tool and making sure we have no layer selected. Let's press Alt on our fill until that's empty. And let's choose a nice bright white for our stroke. About six pixels should do it if you're using the same parameters as me, but obviously you can just pick and choose that. And I'm just gonna click on each point of our triangle. 
So maybe we have this large triangle here be our main shape from the which the others grow. Now you can see at the moment that these have sharp edges and I actually want those to be round. So I'm going to select that and I've got a plugin for this, but I'll show you the main way to do it. If you twirl down contents, shape one and stroke, you'll get your line cap and your line join. You can just change both of those to be round in order to follow along. And that just changes the edges of these corners to be round. And if there were any edges of lines where they weren't connected, they'd also be round. I've got a tool here called butt capper, which does that for you. So we'll call this one triangle main. And now we just need to finish drawing off the rest of these shapes in the way that we'd like them to grow. Okay. Now I'd picture this being one shape. So I'm going to grab my pen tool again, making sure I've got no layers selected and I'm going to choose and it's important to choose where you start from. So I'm going to choose here because this is where it's going to grow from. So we want it to grow from that side. So I'm going to zoom in, make sure I'm pretty accurate there. And I'm just going to grab each corner. Doesn't matter if you're hundred percent accurate, of course, because we're recreating it anyway. And I'm just going to grow that up to about there, like so. That looks pretty good for that shape. Again, you could twirl down, go through the layers, but I'm just going to use, um, but a kappa here to change those around. And we'll call this one uh, triangle bot for bottom. Now we just need this line that cuts through here and this semicircle as well. So let's do this line by itself. I feel like this might be nice if it grows up from this second point. So I'm just going to grab this here, go up to here and finish and then round off those corners. We'll call this one line single. Now, the last one to do is this semicircle. Now you could do this with a complete circle shape um, by creating a large circle like so, roughly guessing the middle, scaling it into position. But I'm gonna find that probably hard to match up these two shapes, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and wing it with the pen tool and see how that looks. So I'm gonna choose the starting point here because I'm probably gonna want this to grow in from the top. Around halfway around our semicircle shape, I'm going to click and drag until I get something that I'm happy with. If you hold shift, you can make sure that it applies to uh, snapping to angles. It doesn't work for us in this case. So instead, I'm just going to click and drag that. Now, if I click on the ending point, that should create a curve that has the same um, acceleration and angle, boom, as the other half. So that should be fairly smooth. Looks pretty good, but you can see that this line doesn't match up entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in circle here. I'm going to cap both of those off. And then on my single line or triangle bot rather, I'm going to go back to my pen tool. I'm going to click on that once just to highlight that last one end point. And I'm going to drag this so that it meets up with my finished shape. Like so. Perfect. That looks pretty good. So we can collapse all of those. And if we temporarily hide our background, we can see what we've got so far. That looks pretty good to me. Now, one thing you can do if you wanted to add a bit of extra dynamity to this is you can drag some of these lines below your uh, image. For example, this single line here might look quite good if that actually tucks behind the shape like so. Now we still want this to grow like normal because when the image comes in, as you can see here, the lines grow into place and appear behind the image and then the image appears back on top of it. So you do need to grow those in fully before you hide them. So that's why it's worth to do all these with separate shapes. Let's bring back in our text and hide our image again so that we can see a bit easier. And let's work on this text here. Now I've used a font called Lavello, uh, and the font reads ashes fall forests rise. So I'm going to put all those on each new line. Now I'm going to need Lavello Black. Again, if you want to, you can download this font from my website. But also, again, there's no reason why you can't use your own fonts for this. Now, all you need to worry about is lining up that first line. Um, now, if you've got caps lock on, that's what you'll see there. You'll see that, um, that black screen like so. Just hit caps lock to turn it off. You're basically cancelling your refresh view. So worry about lining up the first line first. So let's scale this so that it fits our text just roughly. Looks pretty good, like so. Now, if we double click inside our text and go to our character palette, we should be able to increase our leading here. And it looks like 
we need to increase our um, <clears throat> uh, kerning as well, just, just slightly to make that fit. There we go, to 18. I'm just going to use the space bar to push these along until they um, fit. doesn't matter if they don't fit entirely accurately. Um, I'm not super bothered about that because we can probably just jimmy it like so. Okay, so make that one fit, make that one. See, the way these aren't matching up accurately entirely, I'm not super bothered about that because we're going to be hiding that original image anyway. And to me, that looks pretty good. Okay, now <clears throat> we might as well, whilst we're here, choose which sections of this text that we're going to remove. As you can see, uh, in the original copy here, part of this text has been cut by the lines, okay? So it looks like this F, H, A, and T have been cut, so let's recreate that. I'm gonna turn on everything apart from the original image, and with my text layer selected, I'm gonna grab my pen tool. This is gonna automatically make it a mask. Let's cut off a portion of this H, like so, by just drawing around it. Now this is going to default to add, but what we actually want is to twirl down these masks here and change it to subtract. That will cut it away from there. Let's do the same on this F, again with the layer selected, so we're just creating a second mask. Change that to subtract. Let's chop off the top of this A, like so. Again, change that to subtract. And this T as well. While we're at it, we might as well chop off the bottom of that S because it's going to infuriate me. Voila, looking pretty good. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that, I think. So what's next to recreate then? Let's turn on our bottom image and find out. So it's just these triangles around the edges and this hexagon. Now let's quickly do the triangles and then we'll do the hexagon last. So this is obviously quite simple. We just need to go to our shape tool, long press on that until you get the polygon tool, zoom in really far and click and drag. Now I've got a pentagon here, I want a triangle. So you can add or remove sides from a pentagon, uh, from a uh, polygon, sorry, uh, with a shift and then the up or down keys, which will add or, or subtract a side from a polygon. Let's roughly line this up. Now we don't want a stroke on this one, so I'm just gonna alt click that and I'm gonna go and grab a white fill like so. Now, when these spin into place, you want them to spin from the center of the triangle. When you draw an equilateral triangle in After Effects, the center point is not actually um, in the center of the triangle, it's off towards the bottom. So let's grab our pan behind tool and we can just drag that until it's the center. Now, if you've got snapping turned on, it might be difficult to do that. So you might want to turn this snapping off at the top here and then you should be able to drag this center point around freely until it goes to roughly the visual center of that triangle. So we'll just shift that over a little bit. I find snapping quite useful in most circumstances, so I'm gonna turn that on. Now for simplicity, I'm gonna call this triangle um, small, and I'm gonna duplicate this into every other triangle that you can see on here. Now this is literally just Command D or Control D on a PC to uh, duplicate that. I'm gonna move it around with the shift and arrow keys, and I'm gonna scale it down like so. If you want to rotate it as well, you can obviously hit R to bring up rotation and bring that in so that it rotates to the correct angle. With that being said, I'm just gonna fast forward through the rest of these because you don't need to see me do that a million times and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, that looks like that's all of our triangles recreated here. We can test that by just turning this uh, original image on and off and seeing if we can notice any changes. Nope, I can't. So I'm gonna grab all of these and just to help me keep my um, layers organized, I'm gonna change them to a different color down here. You can do the same as well if you want. If you wanted to keep all of these um, <clears throat> grouped a bit better, for example, you could change all of the lines to an individual color like brown. You could change your um, image that you'd like to keep to a, a unique color as well, perhaps uh, cyan, and you could change your text, leave that as red. Now we know that if we look at anything brown in the timeline, that's going to be any of our line sections that we've got on the screen there. Okay, so let's carry on. The last thing we need to add in is this hexagon in the background. Now I'm going to create this in a way that might seem confusing at first, but it's due to a limitation of the grid plugin, so bear with me. I'm going to create a new solid 
and I'm going to make this about 5,000 pixels wide. Now this is guesswork at the moment. I'm literally just guessing because I've no idea how to do this. This is slightly different to the way that I created before. I'm going to go to my effects and presets and I'm going to type in grid and I'm going to generate a grid on our um, uh, solid here. Now you can see we have some different options for this grid, okay? However, you can um, increase or decrease the amount of size. You can say size from width slider, which is what we want, and you can increase or decrease that grid size, okay? Now there's a limit to this, as you can see, 200 and four. Now that four is obviously far too dense, but if you don't have a solid that's large enough, you can sometimes run into trouble with getting the squares that you want the right size. So I'm just gonna drag this, cover our entire um, uh, canvas with it until I get a square I'm roughly happy with the size on. Change that border down to one because that's a bit of a thick border. And let's try an even 10 as our width. That looks a little bit smaller than our original one. So let's try 12, that looks pretty good. And let's try a border of 1.5, nice. That looks about similar, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna briefly hide this and I'm gonna try and grab the eyedropper color of what I need here. So I'm just gonna grab a shape tool, choose the fill, go to my eyedropper and I'm gonna try and grab this dark color here. Make it a little bit darker and let's copy this color code, okay? Now, if we go back to our um, grid layer, which we will rename grid, we can then go to the color here and paste that in. And that gives us a grid of the correct color. Now, next bit's really easy. With your solid layer selected, let's go back to our grid tool here and we can draw a shape, which is gonna um, automatically create that as a mask, okay? Now, what you'd think that would do is mask out your layer and subtract the grid from everywhere else, but that's not, unfortunately, how it works. So we're gonna try something different with our um, grid this time. What we're gonna do with no layer selected is gonna grab our polygon tool, and this time we need a six-sided shape. So I'm gonna hit three times like that, and I'm gonna drag this until it's about the same size. If we then go to gr uh, rename this layer grid mask and press U on both of those to collapse them down, let's give them the same color, let's give them purple. We can then go to our track mat of our grid, which if you can't see, you just need to go to toggle switches or modes. Let's choose alpha mat grid mask. And what that does is anywhere that this layer, this grid mask layer has content, it will show the grid layer underneath it. So if we hide that original image there, we can see that we now have our hexagon grid. We can grab both of these, drag them all the way down to the bottom like so. And you can see we've recreated pretty accurately our original image there. So I'm going to delete our original one now that we don't need because we don't need it anymore at all. And that is our preparation for animation complete. And with that, I think that'll do for this first episode. Uh, join us next time when we're going to get to start animating this thing and hopefully we might even finish it. Uh, until then, happy animating and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.